respected chief guest Ms. Sheeta Sudhar Ma'am, honorable guest of honor and HOD of Electronics and Telecommunication Department, Mr. Nitin Samrish Sir, and all respected and responsible faculty members with Ashwini Shinde Ma'am and Eknath Patil Sir, all the faculty coordinators and the president of Innovation Club KIT, Mr. Aniket Gadi and Vice President Ms. Aishwarya Patil and all the members of Innovation Club and my dear friends. Good evening to one and all present here. I, Harshuda Mudgal, Head of Campus Activities Innovation Club KIT, taking this pledge, pleasure to welcome you all for the Innovation Club KIT's grand opening session of this year alumni interaction with Ms. Sheetal Sutar. I request Ms. Yashoswi Kari to give the brief introduction about Innovation Club, that is when and why the club was started, what was its vision and about the current vision and working of the club. Thank you, Harshada. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. I am Yashasvi Khadi, member of Innovation Club. The Innovation Club was started in year 2019-20 with the motto, by the students, for the students. As we all know, electronic circuit design is a complex mathematical and analytical subject. So for to create interest in this field, we must know all the basic information about all the components and that's why Innovation Club was started. For designing any system, the main prerequisite is the basic knowledge about its components. Actually, the system is ultimately the set of components working together. Thus, these components are our resources. And innovation is itself a creative and innovative use of resources available to us. So if we don't know how to use them, what are their practical applications, then we will not be able to do innovation in field of electronics. Therefore, to make it easy and let everyone get the knowledge of these components from very basic to the advanced level, we, the Innovation Club, arranged the session. Initially, when our president, Swapnil Vibhuti and his team took the initiative to start the Innovation Club. That time, the team realized that students are not able to make their own projects. And that's why to assist them for the project, they started to take an offline session, which were scheduled after the college time. The sessions were based on interfacing the sensor with Arduino, and they covered almost 22 to 24 sensors interfacing with all the detailing. But after all this pandemic and the online culture, the requirements of students and also the industries were changed drastically. So to cope up with all these changes, the Innovation Club also changed their methodology. Thus, for this year, the sessions of Innovation Club are structured in form of courses having two phases. The phase one will be understanding the circuit and phase two will be mastering the circuit. As we all know, the best way of learning electronics is the learning through circuits. That's why in first phase, we are going to learn about the circuits of basic components like resistor, capacitor, inductor, transistor, different types of sensors, transducers, basic types of antennas, operational amplifiers, and the timer ICs, so that we can learn their architecture and also will be able to know their application. So when we learn all about these components, we will start our phase two, that is mastering the circuits. The main content of phase two are Arduino and Raspberry Pi based circuits, which will include automation, sensor interfacing, project building, and system designing. Thus, when we know the basics, then way to innovation becomes easy. So the registration for session will be from 1 February. So make sure you are joined to Innovation Club WhatsApp group for upcoming updates. We all are looking forward to see you all in the upcoming session. Thank you. Uh, so, thank you, Yashasvi. Now, our Vice President Aishwarya Patil will introduce our today's Chief Guest. Uh, hello, Aishwarya. Yes. Hello, everyone. So, the main problem with the students from Electronics and the Telecommunication Department is that they find it difficult to be placed in a hardware or we can say that in the core companies because there may be two reasons. First, they don't know the path to reach it. And the second, there may be improper or not at all guidance for such students. 
and that is why we have Ms. Sheetal Sudar Madam as a chief guest for today's session. As we all know that she is also from the same college KIT and with the same background that is BE Electronics. I think she can relate with us very well and I'm feeling very proud to say that her journey, her journey from KIT COEK to Intel Corporation can be a perfect guide for us. So Sheetal Sudar Madam grew up in the Kolapur itself. She completed 12th from Vivekanand College, Kolapur, and B Electronics from KIT COEK. During the engineering, she has worked on two major projects, patient monitoring system and AI-enabled electronic mobility aid for visually impaired people. Then she took admission for MTech in VIT Pune through the GATE exam. She has worked on three major industry-level projects. These projects were related to vehicle electronics processors and AI in the hardware. We will get to know more about these projects in, a, in upcoming conversation as well. Then in 2018, she joined Intel Corporation Bangalore as an associate design engineer. And now she is RTL design engineer in the same company itself. Thank you, Aishwarya. Good design is partially creativity and innovation, but primarily knowledge and awareness. So trusting on this fact, Innovation Club arranged this first session to give you a little bit knowledge, a little bit awareness through today's alumni interaction on the topic, the journey from KIT COEK to Intel Corporation. Now, I would like to invite on mic Ms. Sheeta Sutar Ma'am to give her starting words. Hello, everyone. Hello, ma'am. Will you please uh, keep video on? Yes, Josh. Do you Thank see you. me? Yes, ma'am. I would like to see you all also. Okay, anyways, first of all, I would like to thank KIT Innovation Club because giving, giving this opportunity for me to live my moments younger me as a younger me with you all enthusiasts. So, so it's, a, it's a really an honor to be there to help you out with whatever learnings I have so far. And uh, for that, I have got some small slides. Maybe I would like to run through that. I hope that would uh, ignite some more queries in your mind and it may answer some of the queries also. So uh, I'll share my screen. Let me know if you can see that. Just a minute, I'm sharing it. You guys see it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So talking about journey from KIT to Intel. So I just gave some bullets here. I don't want to really go one by one, but one thing I would like to highlight here is uh, the discussion I had, I mean, uh, in the classrooms when Nigveka sir was teaching us some embedded system related subject, he just gave an uh, example of some uh, power electronics company and some of his friends were working there and he just mentioned that uh, the work was going uh, on related to power electronics and on the power banks. So he mentioned the power banks uh, work was which was happening there around 2012 that was going to come in market after five years that was a point where it got uh, triggered me that some it's something amazing that you see group of people are working together today and that product is coming out in the market after five years and that is also with reduced area much power efficiency that better battery life so that was some trigger point that uh, helped me understand what I really like. 
okay so th that's where i started exploring what are the uh, all uh, embedded relator companies what they do or what are the vlsi related stuff and meanwhile i was observing myself that i'm liking digital de digital design subject embedded design sub uh, embedded electronic subject uh, and based on that i choose electives as a uh, real time operating system and uh, soc design those two were my final year electronics so all those three four subjects gave me an idea to identify myself that which are the area of my area of my interest so that was a breakthrough and why i highlighted that story here is because you need to listen what's happening around like whatever nigveka sir told that day that power electronics related stuff that power bank related stuff which gave thought to my mind that what's happening around and what would be the future uh, what would be the future okay so that was something gave me one trigger to look myself to observe myself what are the areas of interest so that is one thing in b that triggered me this thing i decided to pursue mtech uh, mtech in the same subject and that's why i went for mtech that was the main reason for going for mtech and while going to mtech there was one uh, problem like i got placed when i was in b itself but leaving that opportunity back and going forward for mtech was bit tough if you know uh, when your friends are getting placed and you are spending more time in learnings and studies and don't know where you will land there when you are already uh, leaving one opportunity which you already ha have in your hand so then i realized it's it's time to take decision so i i thought i would be able to do that i would be able to make that and i move forward for mtech and when i was in mtech i chose uh, electives again which were related to vlsi my project also was related to embedded systems and also uh, if you are already aware that when you pursue mtech and when you are get qualified you will have to work part time so as a part time part time work i choose options like also embedded electronics lab sessions so uh, i used to teach lab sessions to the students uh, for the subject of embedded systems so that's where it was something in one direction i planned my journey that i want to land somewhere in the embedded systems or the vlsi so that's where journey started uh, starting from third year of b till mtech till then it was everything fine but in mtech also when uh, actual campus placement started that was again uh, kind of a bit tough time because all the companies which were coming were software related and uh, i was really wanted to be in hardware engineering or the elect real electronics related jobs so i started looking for opportunities outside not through campus placements but uh, offline like uh, looking for some uh sites like freshers world or nokri.com also started looking at linkedin and that time i realized uh, for freshers uh, vlsi and embedded jobs were less i mean whatever requirements were there those were only for uh, kind of experienced people like two years of experience three years of experience so this time is somewhere something which you have to be firm on your decision you need to ensure that whatever industry requirements are there you already have some set of skills with you where you can go forward and prove yourself that you are capable of fitting this particular position so that's where i started looking and i got one opportunity uh, in the hyderabad but the thing was that uh, the compensation was not very good uh, it was just 10 uh, 10000 per month and uh, i was expecting more uh, but again the, the problem happens that you don't get much opportunities directly i mean that easily in the domain of vlsi or embedded so i accepted it and uh, later when i decided to switch to i mean shift to hyderabad just one week before that i got to know about another opportunity in pune so what happened that was a th thursday when i got to know about this opportunity at open silicon pune it was a thursday and the interview was scheduled on friday and i was in kolhapur itself on thursday also i was in kolhapur then i thought let's try out before going to hyderabad let's try out i wrapped up quickly and went to pune the same day itself next day i appeared for interview and the interview was completely technical i mean whatever i had studied in bm tech that digital design embedded system based on that only interview happened and it went fine uh, the one thing here 
cracking the interview. Maybe we'll discuss on that again later. And after interview went fine, the joining was on the Tuesday, immediate Tuesday. So uh, only two, three days gap was there. But I said yes to it because it was uh, the opportunity was very nice compared to the previous one. And I said yes directly. I didn't had anything with me. Uh, I mean, the clothes and luggage and everything. I had just went there and said yes to it. And somehow I managed and stayed there and joined the company on Tuesday. And when I the real work actually started, it was really, really interesting. I got a problem statement from the customer directly. I got into a team where team was directly working with the customer uh, and customer got some uh, problem statement for us. And we had to think on how we can give a solution for that problem. Starting from there, that how this problem can be solved and implementing that, not implementing directly, but writing down how we can uh, provide a solution to this problem uh, so that we can, uh, for this, we can say as an architectural discussion, once that is done, implementing that architecture into a hardware implementation, that was a kind of a beginning from a scratch. It really helped me to understand how an electronics industry or a VLSI industry run. A brief idea about prior to that, I didn't know about how VLSI job would be. Okay. So, but there, 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 uh, there uh, again, there was one uh, point here that internship was of six months only. And I had already completed five months of internship and that was the last month. And I still didn't had any intern to employ conversion later with me. So again, I was worried that what would happen in the next month, I would be again jobless. So I again started looking for some other opportunities outside. I was also following up with the HR in the same company, whether they are going to convert me or if there are no openings, then just tell me upfront that there are no openings and I should look uh, for other jobs outside. So that kind of confusion was there. Uh, but suddenly I came across another opportunity that walk-in drive was there in Pune itself. And I appeared for that and that interview that uh, it was uh, Intel interview that also went uh, on my internship work only. So the questions which they asked me was purely based on internship only. And since I had got a very good opportunity in my internship to work on the problem statement, starting from the customer discussion till the implementation of the same, the interview really went very well. And that's where uh, I landed into Intel. So that was something uh, which I had dreamed of, but I didn't know I, I would be in the Intel this soon. But it's uh, what we can say, what we worked till, till, that, uh, till that date and whatever opportunity I came across and maybe with some fortune, I got into Intel. But now, when we discuss about journey from uh, KIT to Intel, and when you guys are, guys are also looking for how you can land into companies like Intel or some other hardware companies, you want to be an hardware engineer. I have some questions for you also. Okay, like uh, if you have already planned that you want to be in VLSI or embedded, or uh, that too, if you want to, do a job or you have any ideas that you plan for a business or something else. So I would like to hear that also so that we can discuss in detail about how you can reach there. So what do you think guys, where do you want to be? I mean, you want to do a job or you have any business ideas, how you want to discuss our further steps. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so I would like to request Mr. Saurabh Joshi and Mr. Vivek Zadho to uh, take a charge and give us a pleasant if experience of hearing your interaction that the question and session. Hello, Saurabh. Yeah, yeah, Harshida, I do have a few more slides before going for Q&A. I would like to have this also an interactive so that I will get an idea. Uh, and based on that, maybe we can discuss further and can also get Q&A also. 
okay so somebody oh. has plan for startup wow that's nice so uh it's abhishek okay abhishek do you have any uh, ideas in your mind and have you i mean how you have planned for it when you say uh, you want to do a start, start with a comp your company okay gps related processor design nice you can speak up guys you can turn on your videos you can speak in marathi also that's fine any any language which you are comfortable hindi english or marathi i would really like to hear you also yeah uh, yes uh, my name is shridhar uh, actually yeah. i am interested to join initially i am interested to join a company who is hmm. working under analog electronics domain uh, hmm. and more specifically uh, those companies who are designing the pcbs uh, hmm. who are making the circuit boards so i really like to uh, i would really like to design those parts so i am searching for such companies who are actually providing uh, the core electronics uh, work flow okay okay so you are you are interested in hardware engineering i, I will yes, consider this as a hardware engineering right now okay and uh, anyone else is having uh, any terms like uh, i i want to be in hardware engineering but uh, uh, like just uh, shridhar mentioned that he wants to be there in the analog design or the pcb design uh but one more question i have here so when you say you want to work on analog or the pcb design how do you see yourself working working with computers or working in the labs so when you go for analog engineering also there also it would be different domains that designing may happen uh, would happen on laptops so your co complete job would be on the laptops only you will not be able to see Uh, in front of you that the pcb is there and the certain components are there and you are able to see if uh, whatever functionality you have designed if they are working there or not so there will be different parts again when you say analog design or the pcb design like that or if uh, so uh, akash has also mentioned about processor design so akash when you say processor design right so when you are a designer what type of design designer you want to be you want to design an architecture or you want to design the platform on which your design will run or when uh, abhishek says gps related so gps also you want to use gps as your application or you want to design something similar to gps okay uh, artificial intelligence machine learning okay vlsi nice hello ma'am yeah ma'am sakash uh, yes, so ma'am in so talking about in proper processor designing i am interested in actual synthesis and sgd engineering so basically the uh, typical static uh, timing analysis and all parts will offer into this processor into this front end designing i am interested into that part okay okay it's good to know you already know much about it sakash that what uh, what it's uh, synthesis what it's static timing analysis it, it's nice yeah thank you so for the others who are uh, still try, trying to understand which are their expertise in the hardware i just had listed some of the things what type of hardware engineering jobs you can do so in the vehicle or in the aeronautics or any machine that exists today most of the things are going towards a uh, kind of electronic devices so uh, th that comes under vehicle uh, electronics or the uh, aviation or the aeronautical stuff also the embedded would be application oriented that you have certain components and you have certain problem statement in front of you and to give solution for that problem you are using certain uh, already developed components and uh, designing some solution out of it that would be embedded and uh, communication if you think whatever communication subject you are uh, you might be learning right now or some of some one of you would be learning in future in maybe next semester so like that so in communications whatever our mobile companies are there 
so see sometimes we say our network is not correct and not not good we see network issues so communication engineers would be working on the live networks to to ensure that uh, the net uh, the routing of the data as in the packets is intact so some uh, applications if you say uh communication engineer that would one would be the mobile electronics other would be in the car itself if you see these days cars they have lot of electronics in it so communication within the car itself when sensor senses some of the data it has to transmit transfer that data from one place to other place for processing so that is also comes under uh, some communication uh, like uh, communication meaning uh, the protocols communication protocols uh, data sending from one place to other place like that so power electronics is like your inverters or the batteries batteries in your uh, small devices or in your uh, home or in the industries so related to uh, power electronics you can also find some jobs in uh, what we can say in government sector or or in the private sector and robotics you would be already working on some of the robotics ideas in your uh, competitions or uh, in some of the uh, webinars or you might have heard some seminars uh, go going at international level that they some countries would have developed a robot which is talking so uh, robotics also we can say it's a future and within semiconductor itself there are lot many uh, opportunities i mean uh, semiconductor itself is a very huge domain a very vast domain so if you take an example of a laptop okay when your laptop is out in the market it goes through lot many processes okay so at the end it's like the company who is designing the motherboard that delivers that motherboard to some other company for further development so that motherboard when it's developed it has to go through certain hardware checks that certain platform checks that your chip what you have developed you have placed that on your motherboard some designing has happened around it what if if there are any production related issues at the time of manufacturing two lines have got short there by mistake so there would be certain kind of testing happened even after the platform is developed and that is called a platform verification okay and designing that platform would be job of design engineer uh, that's where we can say platform design engineer before that platform engineer when, when that platform engineering stage appears is when your problem statement is implemented into your soft solution that soft solution has went through all the uh, design and verification cycles of synthesis uh, verifying uh, functionality of that and once it is finally uh, confirmed that whatever you have designed it has working uh, as per that expectations then it will see the platform so that's where the platform design and verification comes before that there is a dft dft stands for design for test so as we discussed previously if there are any manufacturing faults those also needs to be analyzed and should be fixed before our design is delivered to the customer so let's take an example these days all those pcb designings will will happen through industry automations only so there would be huge industries that will be doing all that manufacturing of your design that i whatever ics or the logic gates or the uh, the pcbs what you say these days so at the product level that would be at very 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 lower level meaning meaning it would be nanometers or the uh, 14 nanometer 7 nanometer 5 nanometer multi multiple very low level of technologies would be there so at that time some manufacturing mistakes would happen and that should be caught by some mechanism and that mechanism is the design for testing so in the design we insert certain logics okay uh, for example you have your memory let's take an example of sram so you have designed sram that is now manufactured you have got that into the platform 
You have read that back. Now, if you have written all zeros, you expect to return back all zeros. But what if it returns something else? What does that mean? Where is the issue? So that logic which you have placed, that will pull all the lines one by one. It will send one zero to one line, it will read back. It will send one to some other line, it will try to see if one is coming back. And it will identify at what place the issue has been there. Okay, and then they will have certain solutions to it and they will try to fix that issue. So that's where the DFT design and verification role comes up now what we have talked till now is related to platform only that whatever you have designed that has went through manufacturing and the product is in front of you before that what happens so when you have got your architecture with you you have to design your uh, hardware as per the architecture so that is the term when we call it as the rtl design engineer Let's take an example. Um, maybe you have some ADCs and DSCs in your design, different types of ADCs and DSCs in your uh, microarchitecture. You have implemented that. Now, you uh, that implementation, we call it as the RTL design engineer. Once that is implemented, someone should verify whether that is working fine or not. Functionality wise, I'm not talking about the manu manufacturing defects, ri defects right now. I'm talking about functionality defects. Please stop me if there are any queries or if I'm too fast or uh, you are finding it's difficult to understand. Uh, we can reiterate over this. I'm just taking one minute break to hear you from uh, if you have any queries still now. Okay, now till now you understand what are the functionality problems and the manufacturing problems or is there any, uh, uh, shall I repeat it or is there any query? What is the difference between functional issue and the manufacturing issue? Maybe I, I'll just repeat it once if someone has any query. Manufacturing issue meaning you have designed uh, whatever design you have done, RTL design you have done, that is working fine. It has gone for manufacturing and at the time of manufacturing something has went wrong and that's why it is not working fine. Is a manufacturing defect and that can be resolved with the DFT design and verification engineers. Now before that at the implementation time itself, if designer would have done any mistake, that should be catched by verification engineer, RTL verification engineer. So that's where role of RTL verification engineer comes in picture. So once you design it, someone should verify it before that goes for manufacturing. In the design also, there would be lot many things. It's not something you just designed it or you coded it and then it's done. Uh, like somebody previously said it uh, synthesis timing analysis and all that so there are uh, similar multiple other stages in between okay so there would be lot many tools that uh, industry people use to ensure that whatever you have designed is meeting uh, expected quality so uh, there are tool level opportunities also for example like timing analysis when we say how you will analyze whatever timings you have set are working fine or not so there should be some tool to send so, some data to it to read that data back and analyzing whether it is meeting that time or not so for that timing analysis there has to be a tool like there would be some other tools we can say lint lint is stuff when you when you are at very initial stage of your design uh, for example, as we took example of ADCs and DSCs, okay, you would be having certain data lines on it. 
what if you you have connected only 15 bits of data on the 16 bit bus what would happen anyone would like to answer you have connected 15 bits of data to 16 bit bus what would happen the 16 bit bus can be randomly either 0 or 1 so it will create a 16 bit of error data yeah so 16th bit you cannot guarantee what it is it could cause an error and if someone does otherwise if they have connected 16 bit of data on 8 bit of bus what would happen they would lose 8 bits of data so certain mistakes may happen by human error okay so to identify that there would be a tool they call it as a lint tool okay so what that tool does it checks connectivity between the design whatever components you have connected together whether their widths are correct, whether input and outputs are connected properly, whether your flop is having clock, whether your resets are connected correctly or not. So certain checks would be there and that would be done by tools only. So working at the tool level also requires a knowledge of electronics engineering, basic knowledge of the electronics engineering. So it's not only uh, hardware engineering does mean you will be working in the lab. You will be working with the laptops only, but you will be de doing okay. hardware design work only. Okay. Uh, any query? Okay. Now we'll discuss uh, how you will get to the uh, get to your dream job. Now at least we have got an idea about what would be the job opportunities for the hardware engineering in VLSI domain. But finding that right opportunity and reaching there, getting landed into the company you are dreaming about, it would be it, it would not be too difficult. But if you have certain set of skills, it would be easy also. Okay, so one thing is you should have a domain knowledge, whatever companies you are going to apply for, whatever job position you are going to apply for, you must have domain knowledge about it. You should be prepared for that uh, before applying. Next thing is networking. Now, how networking would help? If you are connected to multiple industry people, to your teachers, to your training placement officers, to your friends in different colleges, you would get to know what are the things happening around, what are the current market needs. So you can analyze yourself, what are the things which you should improve yourself or what are your current strengths based on which you can apply for certain opportunities. Once you have your kind of network uh, from which you can get some details about opportunities available. It may happen that your set of skills and what are the requirements of the company, those are not matching. Okay, so what you have to do there is you have to ensure current market needs and based on that you have to, up, you, you are upgrading yourself. For example, you are learning VHDL right now, but I don't know if you are learning VHDL or Verilog. I, uh, what is hardware description language you are uh, learning right now? Uh, maybe third year or final year. I, I don't know. Verilog and system Verilog. That's very good. So, so you are already meeting the market needs. So currently Verilog and system Verilog is being used. One more thing here, if you would have heard the VLSI industry also is looking for higher abstraction levels of these languages also. So in future, Verilog and System Verilog also might not be required. Uh, I mean, all the times, most of the designing may happen in the languages like C, C++, and that time Verilog and System Verilog might, might not have that much of... Uh, a kind of uh, uh, weightage to it. 
so you have to be aware so, so now you know that you know you need to know very luck system very luck but along with that vlsi design engineer need to also know uh, should know c c plus plus also so in future the design would happen at higher levels of the abstractions so one has to be aware of that also so if you learn c c plus plus and if you go for an interview and say see i know very log i know system very log and i'm also learning c c plus plus which could help me enhance my skills when the hardware description languages would be developed in c and c plus plus and that is going to happen in the future it's not something i'm giving a, giving an example it's a current industry trend that people are looking for migrating to higher abstractions levels so this is something you should create a, an opportunity for yourself to present yourself what are the different skill sets you have apart from others okay so that's the point you should highlight in your resume you should mention in your interviews what is different in you and that's where that opportunity comes to you and another thing is patience when you are looking for a hardware engineering you must have a lot of patience because most of the companies would say we need a uh, experienced candidate so that time you should not be a kind of uh, what we can say you, you you should not be filled with some negativity or what would happen if only experienced opportunities are coming experienced candidate opportunities are coming up how we should go for it and all so you just keep working on yourself and keep applying for the different companies irrespective of whatever is the experience level so when i applied for intel that opportunity or the, that walk in drive was for 8 to 10 years of experienced people and i just applied saying that these this is my skill set and you just help me out if there is any other suitable position in your organization okay so something like that you should always keep trying for even if you don't see it you try to create it okay you you seek for help you go to the people you you tell what you are interested in what is your skill set how you can do this particular activity what are your strengths and uh, i mean it's representing presenting yourself presenting yourself and grabbing the opportunity and for that it really requires patience because people would say no it's support this position is only for 3 years experience candidate so you should apply for another company and and keep trying keep trying because th this takes time getting into a hardware engineering jobs mm, would take time uh we discussed about domain knowledge like you should know in which domain you are expert in what are your strengths what are the uh, ideas which you work you, which you have worked on past and how you performed there so that will help you uh, gain a confidence that these are your strength areas these this is your uh, do, uh, domain where you are interested in and the networking as we discussed you should have all your wires spread everywhere and getting information from the uh, all over the uh, people around you and one more thing i would like to highlight here is you have to be active on the linkedin platform that has really helped me throughout uh, whatever jobs i have applied till now i applied it through linkedin and whatever opportunities i got it Uh, i mean i got placed into open silicon through intel only uh, sorry not intel through linkedin only i got placed into intel when i applied through linkedin and before that also as i told i had got another opportunity that also i had applied through linkedin only so try applying applying and talking to the people a linkedin is a very good so platform very professional people would be there and they would be really helping you out and also you can uh, look for some other uh, online websites like uh, freshers world or nokri or something similar like that and uh, can try checking what are the current opportunities there and you can apply there and another thing is in the companies in the kind of a big bigger companies they do not really go through your resume manually okay so you have to be very careful there when you prepare your resume 
you should keep a certain keywords that will attract a hiring team that this resume looks interesting it has skill set that we are looking for and then they might look that manually once it has got filtered out through their uh, hiring tool then they would look at that manually so having a proper keywords in your resume also is very important when you are applying through uh certain uh, walk in drives or uh, or applying through freshers world or nokri or linkedin like that so keywords is very important i i didn't know about this that uh, these companies has their own tool which filters out the resume is based on the requirements and uh, that keywords uh, really plays a role there uh here one more thing i would like to highlight is uh, there are certain institutes uh, after your graduations you can take a 3 months or 6 months of industrial training and that really uh, gives you an hands on experience for example if you are applying for a vlsi job and uh, there are no opportunities for a freshers you can go through such trainings industrial trainings uh, those would be definitely uh, paid in trainings but those are really good i mean i have heard some experiences from my friends they went through some of the trainings and they got placed into very nice companies so that also is one of the option uh, if anybody would uh, look for and here when you would be preparing uh, for interview uh, make sure that you are watching yourself first before going to interview like how you talk how is your body language how confident you look when you are talking so these are soft skills which really help you to uh, help you to pass through this uh, interview process once you are in the company it's just a technical stuff that one can learn and uh, get excelled into it but soft skills really helped a lot in cracking the interviews so your body language the way you talk your confidence level so how you will get to know about it how you are performing or how you were talking so you have to watch yourself how you can do that you can record your sessions you just sit uh, you sit alone in your room you talk alone you record it and you watch it again how you were talking what mistakes you were doing and that where you will be able to correct those mistakes and improve your body language and this has really helped me i'll tell you uh, when i watched my first video when i was in uh, final year of b at the kit itself and i realized when i was talking i was doing like this every minute i was doing like this when i was in pressure okay it, it naturally happens you are appearing for interview for the first time you might get nervous and when you are nervous you do something like that which which is unknowing which you are also not aware about it so when you watch yourself you will get to know how confident you look how is your body language so so that will really help i would really encourage you all to follow this practice or you can try that in front of mirror if you don't want to record you can try that in front of mirror when you are talking and also writing down what you want to talk for example if someone from you would have got uh, a year drop in between because of certain reasons okay and if one is going for interview definitely there would be question why do you think there was a drop okay what were the reasons what wh was that because of your some uh, personal issues or was that because of your uh, lack of expertise in your academics so you should be prepared for certain such questions uh, for the uh, when you are going for the interview so write down try to be you are the interviewer you are taking an interview of some different candidate imagine whatever your background is there that background's candidate is in front of you so what all questions you will ask that candidate so try to imagine like that and then prepare a checklist for yourself that if this question comes up i will answer this you write down if this question comes up what you will answer you make a habit of writing down what you want to talk so then only you will talk the same thing when that question comes up and you will not be uh, a, a kind of uh, taking some pauses or thinking at the moment when it comes spontaneously 
so you will be very prepared and you will you will look very confident when certain questions comes up so okay. these two things have been really helping uh, helping me okay there is one question in the chat uh, please suggest the names of the industrial training institutes that you spoke about sometime before um okay so industrial training institutes if we say um, there is something i heard about uh, veda iit uh, there is also one good company called soctronics uh, which they do have some pro procedures uh, kind of uh, examination procedures at the beginning and through that they will uh, list out the candidates and based on your uh, it's kind of scholarship type only i mean if you get certain ranks you will be having only 5000s of fees for first five rankers if you do not have a good rank then their fees might be uh, kind of a li little more so it would be soctronics uh, with iit then there is uh, one more um, i don't recall it right now I'll, i'll share those details with you okay there are multiple other and also i would say i mean uh, it, it's not something about uh, promoting certain college or something but one thing which i didn't know about was uh, vellore institute of technology that's there in the chennai uh, they have their different um, examination process along with gate your gate score also would be applicable uh, and also their uh, private exam also would be there if you pass through that examination you would get admission there they would have a kind of a higher fees but their uh, placements and all are more into the hardware domain uh, my most of the colleagues uh, i have seen them uh, coming through uh, that college but the thing is it's being a uh, private college they do not have any uh, stipend stuff like that now i would like to uh, listen from you guys what are the things uh, you got with this i mean if you got more queries from this discussion or you have some different other queries we can discuss that and i would hello. like to see you also if someone is speaking you can turn on your videos hello yeah yeah Uh, ma'am, I have a question. Huh? Uh, after we take, everyone tells that first take a job in pocket, job in your pocket. Uh, even if the job offer is from IT companies, and after the two or three years of settlement, go for uh, go for the higher education. So, what do you think? Which is good for the students? Doing M Tech after we take or M Tech after the job? Uh, okay. So it's not like one thing is right and other is not. it's based on your individual personality how is your uh, interest i'm uh, see what happens if someone goes for a, in a job kind of it job they go for a two or three years of job uh, they work for two or three years there and then if they think of doing mtech that time see what happens either it becomes difficult to leave the job because your financial source is going to end there okay and if you would have already taken some financial responsibilities at your home it becomes difficult to leave a job and go for higher studies so you have to think what type of person you are are you brave enough to leave a job and go for higher studies irrespective of financial conditions also once you are in the job you would get weekend holidays so how you are spending those holidays if you are still connected with the academics then it becomes easier to go for higher studies but if there is a break in your studies then it becomes difficult so if you plan that over the weekends also you will try for some learnings or some uh, weekend courses and you want to keep in touch with academics then you can is uh, definitely think of a job and then going for a higher studies but one more thing i would like to add here is when i was also thinking uh, like i want to go for mtech and i had an opportunity in my hand and uh, leaving that opportunity and going for mtech when this type of type of confusion comes up 
how i thought that time is what what if i go for a job right now i might not come back for academics and that's where i decided it would be good for me to go for a mtech but i have seen people that they are doing mtech and in parallel they are doing job also so uh, a kind of a remote or the distance learning program they have uh, applied for and they are doing uh, mtech over the weekends and weekdays they are doing job so this type also would happen or another stuff if you are very very good at your uh, i mean the strong at your uh, a domain knowledge company can also send you for your uh, for the higher studies uh but that has a very uh, kind of uh, limitations uh, certain uh, agreements that would you would have to do with the company that you would be serving the company for next 10 years then only the company would take risk on you for sending you for higher studies also what is the requirement uh, like if the company has a requirement of getting certain knowledges a knowledge set or skill set into the company that's why they would prefer to send you for certain uh kind of uh, mtech courses or the higher studies and they would ask you to acquire some skills and come back which would benefit the company itself but that option is very limited i mean that cases are very rare that companies are sending for higher studies so when you see right uh when you have a job in your hand that is something gives you confidence that is benefit there once you have uh, gone through that uh independence stage that gives you confidence uh, but again you have to be uh, that much strict to yourself that you are in touch with academics that's uh, and able to go back to the academics after a certain period so hello everyone if anyone has any doubts about the ma'am told us until now then you can ask otherwise we can start with the q and a session by the committee members and after that uh, we also have a, a separate time slot to entertain the questions from the audience uh, so harshada uh, you can start with the q and a session announcement okay so i would like to request mr saurabh joshi and mr vivek jadav to take a charge and give us a pleasant experience of hearing your interaction hello ma'am yeah uh, vivek jadhav and saurabh joshi uh, please turn on your camera you all can turn on <laughs> i would really like to see you all Okay, so uh, committee members, if it is possible, uh, then you can turn on the camera. Hi, it's it's really nice to see your faces. I would really like to come and uh, meet you guys, but uh, let's see post pandemic. So, ma'am, I have a question. Yes. Uh, that is going for the higher study require get. So, how to prepare? for git okay so uh, you can start preparing when you are in second year because whatever subjects which you would be having at the time of git examination those are second year and third year subjects mostly so your final year subjects are generally kind of uh, application oriented but very basic electronics would be there in your second year and third year so from that time itself you can start taking out notes and prepare your uh, what we can say a kind of a notebook so so how i had prepared was uh, at the time of second year third year i wasn't very sure that i would go for mtech so i didn't prepare at that time and when i started preparing in the final year that wasn't a sufficient study i could do and that's why i couldn't get good marks uh, when in my first attempt so i went for a uh, dedicated training for uh, gate preparation and after that i could qualify the gate exam but what i would say when i prepared for the gate exam uh, for the second attempt i used to write down what i have understood so when you are finishing one chapter at that age you should have your own notes at what you have understood so when you are reading next time you don't need to read everything again 
so whatever you have written in your own words that will help you quickly read it and understand what you had read previously that is first stage okay that is very first stage that learning chapter wise and then taking notes chapter wise after your complete study is done complete study of that subject is done whatever you have learned in that subject you should be able to make a note in a single page okay so so that's where i used to prepare one page per subject and i used to highlight i mean in this chapter this is very important that this concept is very important so you can just uh, have one keyword okay if we take an uh, digital design example so what you would take an example is what are your uh, types of gates okay what type of types of gates are there then you can have a small truth, truth table there it, when it's your uh, at the beginning when you are learning your digital design okay so that is one page uh, you are preparing after your digital design study is done then the very short note it would just have a keyword gates logic gates that would be one keyword when you read that logic gates keyword you should be able to recall what type of gates you have studied so far what are their truth tables so how it would be once you are uh, reading it for first time prepare a detailed note what you have understood that would be kind of two three pages what you have understood in your own words once study of that your subject is done a very short note just the keywords that keywords once you read it would you should be able to recall everything what you have learned and you can reiterate over that again and again again and again so when you are doing uh, repetitions of reading reading it should not be thorough reading of the book it should it should be reading of your own notes i hope that answer your question or something else you want to hear no ma'am it was very fine okay there is one more question in the chat uh, okay yeah vivek hello ma'am uh, is there any opportunity for the student to get to internship internship in intel uh, okay so internships would be there I, i mean at least till now i have been there in the intel uh, more than three and a half years so what i have observed is there is they would have specific period there for internship okay uh, sometime around uh, may and june you should start looking for when your final year colleges uh, final uh, year college starts so generally internship period in the intel is for 11 11 to 12 months so starting from june when your college starts internships would start so around that period it's a good idea to uh, look for internships around that period so most of the companies would have internship during that period may or june or or sometimes july also okay ma'am yes either okay one one more question uh, domain specific skills that are required for rtl and synthesis sta engineer profile okay so for rtl design you have to know about basics of the digital design like what are the uh, fs what is the fsm what is the sequence detector uh, what are the counters what are the logic gates so these very basics if you know you start solving some small problems you can uh, google and see what are the uh, initial levels of the uh, design problems like designing uh, what we can say simple example you you see the digital boards uh, like you read some uh, a b c d letters are there and a leds are there so leds led boards you would see right so leds turns on in certain sequence 
so you can think of certain uh, examples and try to solve them so that would help you to gain domain knowledge about the rtl design so rtl design is a different thing synthesis sta is also again a different thing so you cannot do all the three things at a time being an hardware design engineer at a time you would be doing either rtl design whatever you have done that would go to a timing analysis engineer an sta engineer with who would be doing a uh, timing analysis synthesis would be done by some other person so it's not like you should have a knowledge of all the three things at a time you focus either you want to be a timing analysis engineer or you want to be a design engineer once you are once you have got enough knowledge of either design engineer you can switch to the timing analysis or you feel you have acquired some knowledge about the timing analysis you can move back to the design engineering but i don't think uh, one would be doing all these things at a time hello ma'am i have one yeah. more question yeah. uh, just like a few time, few minutes before i said that i want to get placed in a uh, core electronics company so yeah. i want to know the top companies like intel or uh, something that are working with core uh, electronics uh, what yeah. do they expect from a fresher okay so uh, this tier one companies like intel there is a uh, qualcomm a broadcom amd nxp nvidia uh, what not um, uh, sci5 or this open silicon which i said uh, i i did internship there uh, then uh, i don't know uh, you, you would surprise but tcs also would have uh, some small a uh, group of people working on vlsi vipro also would have a uh, group of people working on vlsi there is another uh, company which is mostly working on the automotive stuff uh, and the mechanical stuff but still they do have a group of people working on vlsi the company name is scient and um, many companies are there uh, in mostly in the bangalore Uh, google apple those those companies also would have a small unit working on the uh, vlsi stuff so uh, ma'am uh, what is their basic requirement from a fresher like uh, how much they are expecting us to be uh, get a knowledge of uh, electronics uh okay so being a fresher uh see the these companies okay the tier one companies which we talked just now maybe like intel or qualcomm like these companies mostly uh, they hire freshers as a intern okay so so uh, or you want you you would have to go through off campus so when there are opportunities for two or three years of experienced people you can apply there as a fresher and can see i uh, i have learned digital design i have learned embedded systems or i know real time operating systems i know verilog system verilog i know c i know c++ i know python so if you have this skill set uh, they can uh, look for uh, freshers also okay ma'am thank you yeah and i would like to reiterate again since i just talked about c c++ you ensure even if you are going for hardware companies right you have some knowledge about c c++ and python also or maybe perl shell scripting also uh, yes ma'am sure thank you yeah hello ma'am yeah Yeah, we just want to know you have completed. Uh, sorry, you have done three major projects at industry level. Can you please tell how impact how the project impact on your interviews and all? Ah, uh, interviews. Ah, uh, sorry. Could you repeat your question? Uh, interviews meaning? Ah, uh, in means uh, recruitment. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, uh, I, I okay. I think there are two questions. One question related to the pro, uh, industry projects. Uh, sorry, could you repeat? I think I I, I uh, couldn't uh, get it. Ma'am, as you done the three major projects at industry level, so mm -hmm. how the impact on your recruitment? That means how company look at the project work. So how important project in campus concept? 
uh okay okay so so if i understand your question correctly you want to understand whatever industry level projects i have done you want to know experience about that and also what uh, how is the impact in the company i mean this recruitment word i am getting bit uh, uh, not getting exact idea uh, recruitment meaning uh, if i apply for another company how would that recruitment help uh for uh, whatever work i have done till now you want to know about that recruitment yes ma'am that means how important the projects okay 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 so you meaning whatever projects i have done so far how important they are when i go for different job opportunity and uh, recruitment process at that time you mean right right ma'am okay so one thing when you are changing one job to different job there are certain uh, limitations like when you are fresher they do not expect any hands on experience from you okay so they are open if you have basic domain knowledge okay but when you have certain hands on experience similar hands on experience related jobs only you can apply for so when i have uh, when i say i have done an rtl design uh, okay uh, when i did that in the open silicon when i was an intern so uh, the questions they would ask on the same project only when you are going for next recruitment or the next company for a job change they will ask the questions on whatever projects you have worked only so as i as uh, I, i have only one experience of changing job from open silicon to intel so maybe i can explain that how it was so the problem statement for the project i worked was something related to i had multiple ips intellectual properties ips with me and we had to test whether those ips are working fine or not okay so what we have to do in that case is we have to send certain input to it we have to read output of that and see whatever expected output is coming out or not now that functionality would vary based on configurations we do if you said you want 1 megahertz frequency the data rate would change if you say i want 2 megahertz of frequency the data would data rate would change so accordingly you have to configure your product like what are the expected outputs and then send some sample data to it and read back so in that process see when you are changing your frequency one particular frequency to other particular frequency what are the things you should take care about there would be certain logic in between okay uh, i i don't know if it would be too heavy if i explain something uh, like uh, timing analysis or timing violations Uh, but just to give an example if you are expected uh, if one signal is expected to reach certain point at 1 nanosecond and what if if it is reaching at 2 nanosecond okay so that meaning there is a delay of 1 nanosecond and that's where your design is not working as per your expectations so how you will resolve this problem so this type of question i was asked when i said i have worked on this product in my internship when i appeared for intel interview they asked me this problem that my one signal is at this uh, frequency my uh, signal in other uh, ip is working at this other frequency and i want to connect this two signals so this working at 1 megahertz this working at 2 megahertz and they are getting connected will that work without any internal logic they will not okay because their frequencies are different so what logic you will put in between this was one of the question uh, then i answered this question that there would be certain clock domain crossing stuff coming into picture and then uh, and more technical stuff i mean they they look for more technical stuff how you resolve that problem now second question what they asked was what if if this signal width is maybe 256 now it's not a single single signal it's a bus of 256 connected to bus of another 256 now how will you will connect this so th that would be another aspect what solution works for single bit signal 
that doesn't work for bus of 256 beds or higher width bus. So it has to be a different solution. So they asked another question like that, that what you will do in that case. So it's like whatever projects you have done previously and what you explain them in the interview. So when they tell that, uh, explain about yourself, what you have done in past, what are projects you have worked on. So whatever you explain them based on that only, almost 90% questions will come. Thank you, ma'am. Got it. Okay. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, so there is one rapid fire round. We will give you two options out of okay. which you have to choose only one. Okay. And that are uh, only technical questions. Okay. Uh, so according to you, which is better plan between doing MS in VLSI at abroad university or MTech in uh, top college in India? Uh, it's difficult to answer in a uh, single shot. It's really a scenario specific. Okay, ma'am, you can explain. <laughs> okay, so it's again, uh, when, when you are appearing at the interview, most of the time they will not look from where you have done uh, your master's, whether it's abroad or it's India. Now, that was a time, uh, sometime in the past, maybe around 10 or 15 years back, VLSI opportunities were less in India and those were more in the abroad only and that time I would say uh, doing your post graduation study in abroad and finding some job there and then coming back would have been a right option but these days if you observe most of the VLSI companies are coming to India and in the future uh, there are a lot of companies they are planning to come in India and uh, in that scenario I mean it, it's just a future. That's where I'm saying it may happen and most probably that would happen, but it, it's a future. So we, we at this current moment, it's like uh, even if you do your MTech in, M -tech in India, uh, that would be also perfectly fine. Should not be an issue. Okay, ma'am. Uh, so the next one is uh, which life you enjoyed the most, uh, engineering life or a professional life you are living right now? Obviously, engineering life. <laughs> okay. And one more question, ma'am. Uh, how you are feeling right now? Because uh, you were a student in KIT and uh, you are here again in KIT, but today you are as a chief guest. Uh, so how do you uh, feel right now? You see my smiling face? <laughs> <laughs> yes, obviously. I really like because see, when I was in third year and the second year and I didn't know about this uh, semiconductor industries uh, and I was like most of the uh, area of Maharashtra, you know, uh, VLSI is not reached to the roots. VLSI, uh, embedded, some of the companies are there in Maharashtra for embedded, but very less companies for VLSI, those are in the Maharashtra. Most of the VLSI stuff is in uh, Bangalore only. So whatever company comes in India first time for VLSI that comes in Bangalore and then from Bangalore, then it goes to Hyderabad or the, or the Pune or maybe the Noida. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's where I, I really feel that uh, if I could help someone to know that how they can reach the VLSI industry and, and I really uh, like that to share this experience and help out the students. Okay, and ma'am, uh, just one last question. Mm -hmm. uh, for a BTEC student, uh, which is the best way to enter in core? Uh, either uh, it is going for MS, MTEC, or uh, doing PG diploma from the reputed organization like CDAC, Vector, etc. Uh, CDAC, I'm not aware if they do any VLSI training. Uh, I don't know. I mean, if recently it has started, then it's good. If CDAC is also providing VLSI training, then you can go for it. Uh, I, I don't think there would, because it's six months training only, right? If you see any problem getting a job into uh, VLSI industry directly without any hands-on training, and if you have something hands-on, then it's an added advantage for you to enter an industry. But Vector, I know for uh, Embedded, 
uh, I don't know if vector is for VLSI also. Yes, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> and uh, this is question to you. Uh, if something that I don't know, and if because see, these days I don't. Uh, I mean, uh, keep checking which uh, institute is doing what. But if you guys are in the that phase, and if you already aware, which I don't know, maybe you share that with me so that I can share the same. If someone else is looking for that, uh, is this CDAC and Vector these institutes giving VLSI yeah. training also? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what type of trainings they do give? Uh, I'm not much aware about it. It was the question from the participants. Okay. So we are almost done about our uh, about with our um, question and session. Uh, so here is an announcement for you. Please fill the feedback form as it is required to the certification process, and the link is shared with you. Check your chat box and please fill it. Uh, if not, we we are going to uh, share it with you. Okay, I missed one more question from the chat box. I would like to answer that if you guys have a few more minutes. Or maybe if uh, it's uh, Tanuja sure. Kumbar, if uh, she wants to stay, I can just discuss with her. Anything is fine for me. Okay, ma'am. Okay, so uh, computer science students also will have opportunities in the VLSI okay. industry. Okay, where processor related stuffs are happening. Okay, uh, like if they are doing uh, mobile uh, or the cell phone development or if they are developing a laptop motherboard okay so whenever and hardware is there in the laptop or the mobile a software has to be there okay without the software your laptop will not run without the operating system your laptop you, you will not able to use your laptop right so software engineer role would always be there in the companies which are working on the motherboards or the uh, processors or uh, or the uh, kind of a mobile type of chips okay so always uh, software engineers would require there i hope i answered your question tanuja okay okay thank you so much ma'am almost every point is get covered by journey uh, which is required for preparation of placement and it will definitely work for us like a lamp in a darker night in a forest of technology. I can surely tell that your journey has inspired all the attendees here. This interaction will guide us on the way to progress. So uh, here we go. Here we go to concluding part of this amazing session. I would like to request Mr. Aniket Lad to propose the vote of thanks. Good evening, one and all. Honorable Chief Guest, Ms. Yuta Sutar, ma'am, respected Professor E.C. Patil, sir, and all the participants, it is my great pleasure to and privilege to propose the vote of thanks on this memorable occasion. I, on behalf of Innovation Club, extend a hearty vote of thanks to all the delegates of the seminar for their presence and contribution to make this seminar exemplary. First and foremost, I would like to propose heartfelt thanks to our chief guest, Ms. Chita Sutar Ma'am, for graciously accepting the invitation and attending this function in her busy schedule. The information you gave us, Ma'am, it is very important. We will cultivate the advices you gave us in real life. I extend my gratitude to the respected Professor Mr. E.C. Patil, sir, for his support to schedule this great uh, guest lecture. It is my pleasure to thank the dignitaries not only for participating, but also for guiding. I sincerely thank all the club members for glorifying this function. Last but not least, I thank all my fellow colleagues for enthusiastically attending this session once again. I thank one and all. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Uh, for the further updates, please join our Innovation Club WhatsApp group. Thank you. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Stay tuned.